not afraid of what it means for me to say this life you Trusting you to hear my yes and lead me on. Yes, Lord. Lift your hands and say, Yes, Lord. My life is yours. My life is yours. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We surrender, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. You have decreed the answer to yourself. Give thanks to God for your confession. Mm. That's a strong confession. Faith is expecting Jesus to do what he promised to do. That is favor. He promised to favor you. And you have decreed it already. Uh, yes, we want to fight, wage war aggressively against. Those things you want to do and you do not do. I want to be faithful, but find yourself unfaithful. Demo is the cause. Many things you want to do, but you do not do. So that is it for you, you want to be faithful, you want to be kind, you want to be obedient, but you find yourself otherwise. That is losing control. Demon is the cause. Demon is behind it. Are you with me? So this is why we are here to fight that demon aggressively in the name of Jesus and to restore you back. Mm, restore you back because it takes control of your emotion. Your emotional, you know, oh, leave me, leave me, leave me. Leave me. Ah. Ordinarily, you will not like to do that as a Christian. If I'm right, seems to take control of your emotion. It has to lose that grip with the name of Jesus and leave you alone. Just have to leave you because you are a child of God. You are a child of God. That is why you are here today. You know, ordinarily, you can't come here. Are you with me? I say, ordinarily, you can't come here. Going by what you have gone through before coming here, what you have seen before coming here, what you have heard before coming here, the pain and many you have gone through, ordinarily, you cannot come here. This is to prove that you are a child of God. Ordinarily, you will have been here a long time. Ordinarily, you will have been here a long time. There are many people here today that are supposed to be here 10 years ago. Ordinarily, they will have been here 10 years ago. But you can't come here ordinarily. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, ordinarily, you cannot come here. 
And ordinarily, you will not be able to obey what you hear today and what you are saying. Ordinarily, you cannot obey them. You can say you are not ordinary. You are not ordinary. So why do you compare yourself to others? When others go this way, you want to go that way. You are not like others. When you are sick, you always compare your sickness to others. Your sickness is not like others. Your sickness is not to kill you or to destroy you, but to strengthen your desire for God. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I'm not ordinary. <laughs> if you know that your disappointment is not like order, order their disappointment is to destroy them, to ruin them, but your disappointment to strengthen your desire, to prepare you for a new life coming. You need some. <clears throat> Tell your neighbor, I'm not ordinary. If you know you are not ordinary, why do you compare yourself to others? When you other have headache, their headache can kill them. Your headache cannot kill you. It is the same name, headache, the same name, cancer. The same name, this, the same name, liver problem, the same name, you can have them, but it's not like others. Your pain is not like others. Are you with me? So stop comparing yourself to others. When others laugh, you laugh. No! You are under his eyes. You must hear from above. You need corresponding power to do whatever you want to do. They don't need any to do whatever they want to do. You are not ordinary, tell your neighbor. So stop comparing yourself to others. When others want to go this way, you want to go that way. This is why you are having little difficulty you are facing. Your pain from today, your pain is not like others. You will have pain. The Bible says you will have pain, but that pain is not like others. Your pain could be headache, your pain could be setback, your pain could be disappointment, your pain could be this. Even your pain could be divorce. That divorce is not like other to preserve you for something bad that is coming. When you have some little problem, you will not look at other that had such problem in the past. And looking at what happened to them, you learn, ah, what happened to them? They die, they cripple, they did say, oh, this is what is going to, no, 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 no. Your is not like others. God is, is aware of your pain. It's aware. It's aware. He say, in this world, there will be trouble, tribulation. Shell, I'm aware. So now, whatever you are going through now, for a purpose, for a purpose, what are you going through? Ask your neighbor. And it's not possible for anyone that say, you are not going through something. You must go through something because you are a stranger in this here. You are a stranger. If you are in a place where you are a stranger, you cannot avoid punch, punch. It's not possible when you just find yourself as a stranger in a city, in a place. You know the kind of life you believe in. You are a stranger. No matter how many years you spend on this earth, yet yeah, you are a stranger, you are in the market. No matter how many years you spend in the market, you will still return home. Tell your neighbor, no matter how many years you spend in the market, you will return home. you will definitely return home. So what you are going through is not like others. You must go through something. You must go through something. Because there is no free zone. You must go through something. That does not mean you are not a Christian or a friend of Jesus. That does not mean you are not a candidate of heaven. You are a candidate. You must go through something.
That something is the purpose of your praying the more, fast the more. Pray the more, fast the more. Ask your neighbor, what are you going through? Ask your neighbor. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. It's meant to strengthen you, tell your neighbor. It's meant to prepare you for internal life. It's meant to prepare you for eternal life. So that does not mean because you are going through something, you will not say thank you, Jesus. You refuse to say thank you, Jesus. You always ask, give me, I need healing. I need deliverance. Mm, no. If you are waiting for when you will be free, 100% free, you will not say thank you, Jesus, one day. That time will never come. Tell your neighbor. Waiting for 100% free, that time will never come. Waiting for 100% free, that time may never come. I can hear you. That is what you are waiting for. Yesterday, you were having a headache. Now, headache is gone. Stomach again. You will not say, ah. I want to give thanks to God. Now, stomach again. And what you are waiting for? Headache free, stomach free, everything free. Business boom. Uh, oh, my God. You move free. This one, free. You receive phone call. Hello, the business is fine. You sleep well, no nightmare. You open the door, no problem. Everybody praise you. Good, 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 good. No one talking bad about you. No one persecute you. No one intimidate you. Everything free, 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 free. This is what you are waiting for. That time may never come. Now you are looking for money, business, and the business come, money come, problem come. To use that money, problem that to use the money come. So, can you see? When I have no money, this child never sick. But now money is he's here. Look at this child, he's sick now. When you have no money, nobody call you bad name. Now money come, they say you do ritual. That time may never come because you are a stranger. You are in the market. A man may be sick in body and yet a friend of God. Because when you see someone sick today, you say, as a sort of sin, it's an enemy. Many people, when they're sick, they say, oh, no, this one cannot enter the kingdom. It's not a friend of God. As a sort of a sin, that is why he's sick. No. A man may be sick and yet a favorite of Jesus of heaven. Don't let your situation rule you. Because situation used to talk. It has voice. You will hear, ah, why this problem? Because you are not a faithful, because Jesus does not love you. That is why you have this problem. Ah, look at your colleague now. That is a smoker, a nightclub, sleeping in the clubhouse. Look at, he's living fine. Look at you, you don't have money. Now he's the one giving you money. That kind of voice to overthrowing your position. Ordinarily, you cannot come here. You just wake up in the morning, you dress up, you put on this, you say, something must talk to you. Don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. That is battle. Don't go. What are you going there to do? The man will not come out. Don't go, don't go, he will not see you. There are so many people. Look, don't go, look. You will receive, at that moment you receive phone call that will tell you that, look, a million dollar has been reserved for you. You just have to come now, now, now. Oh, I will not go to church. <clears throat> don't go, don't go. But at the end, you are here. Amen. 
That is what I mean by ordinarily, you cannot come here. If it is not in spirit, it is not in truth. Ordinarily, you cannot come here. Tell your neighbor, if it is not in spirit, it is not in truth. Ordinarily, you cannot come here. How do you know where you are going? Is a place where God wants you to be. The moment you have the thought of going there, battle starts. Trouble. Maybe that place is a place where God wants you to be, and you receive a news that you must go there. It may be two weeks to go. The trouble. Trouble this, trouble that, thoughts not to go. Even if care is not taken, you may be arrested to stop you not to go there. A lot of news, phone call, trouble. You may not even have money. You may be on your way coming, the accident. And nothing will happen to you, but the vehicle will be damaged. Just to stop you not to go. There are many business you have lost. Instead of you to persist to go because of trouble you have on the way you stop. That is business God has reserved for you. Whatever you want to do and it's smooth at the beginning, you know the end is not good. When you start something and the beginning is smooth, profitable, knowing that end, one will cry. Anything close to Jesus receives attack. You have lost many relationships because of someone told you that the man is a criminal. Whereas Satan does not want you to have continued that relationship. It is relationship that will profit table. It is relationship that will change your life. It is relationship that will transform your, your life. Satan will say it's a criminal. Even they will send a letter, a test message, a lot they will do to stop you. And many of you, you have stopped a lot of relationships just because of what you hear, the news, and that is the relationship that could have changed your life and changed your career. Are you talking of business? When you start business that will transform your life, taking you to high places, when you start that business, it will look as if you start trouble. Whatever you invest, you see, lost. As you move, trouble continue. As you move, trouble continue to the extent that you will run to death. Please, continue. Those trouble will stop somewhere. Those trouble will stop somewhere, and where it stops is the beginning of your joy. So today, many of you have so many business cards. You don't know the one you need to do. You are once a lawyer, now a contractor of all kind. Because of failures, because of debt, you keep running from one business to the other. And you don't know that those things are the proof of genuineness of what you are doing. Are you talking of marriage? There are many marriages today, my God. People move from one man to another, one woman to another, just because of crisis. And that crisis at a test to prove that this is a marriage from God. There can be no genuine without first fake. You meet a good family today. They will tell you what they have gone through before they become a role model. A good marriage with age. When you meet them, they will tell you what they have gone through. In the same business, many businessmen 
today that are at the center of their own world. It was sack letter that put them there. The sack letter they received initially that gave them that idea of starting their own business. Today, they are war generals. But many of us, when we receive sack letter, they thought of commit suicide or join gang, criminal. Many, the armed robber today, murderer today, when you catch them, they will tell you, I was once a manager of social company. I was sacked. I have nothing to do to join the arm robber. Whereas many successful businessmen today, businesswomen today, it was sack letter that gave them the idea of starting their own. So life is just like that. You need to sit down and ask yourself, am I right? In our working with the law, there are good and hard times. In our working with the law, time to laugh, <laughs> good, 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 and time to cry. Oh, why this thing happen? Why, why should this thing happen? Why, 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 why? And in you know those things that can cause crying could be persecution, could be sickness, pain of all kinds. Failure, hatred, temptation. In our working with the Lord, there are good and war, hard times alike. Write it down. That is to work with Jesus. This is Jesus. This is me. We work together. There are good times while we are working, and there are also hard times while we are working, you know good times, but hard times you may not know. That is, good time, time to laugh. <laughs> yes, good, 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 I'm happy now. Everything's okay. And time to, to cry. Oh, why it is, why it is. And you know those things that can cause crying. You know those things? What you are going through. What you are going through. These are the things that can cause crying. Pain, sickness, that sometimes you receive that sickness, they'll give you a medical report, they'll say, oh, this is dead. You cry. So, but you never consider the other side. You're working with him. This is why he himself said, I pray your faith will not fail. Because he knew that there will be hard time, time to cry. You say, oh, Jesus, let him look for which doctor. He said, I pray your faith will not fail when the hard time comes. Why are you working with me? Tell your neighbor, I pray your faith Will not fail. Means something will challenge you, something will tempt you, something will hit you, something will bite you, something will cause you, something will hit you, something will. Oh my God. In a hard time when you are overwhelmed, you lose the relationship with Jesus. At the same time, you cannot. Because the joyful heart is where Jesus When you are overwhelmed, the thing that could make you to cry, <laughs> and you are overwhelmed, you can't serve God. Man. And this is what is happening to you people today. Seem to be overwhelmed. The thing that can make you cry, not only you cry, but you are overwhelmed by the thing. Not only you cry, you complain, you murmuring, you despair, but you are overwhelmed. 
When you are overwhelmed by situation, you can't pray. You will lose the relationship. The relationship is gone. Next, why me of this? Why me of that? Why me of this? Why me of that? You begin to look at Jesus in a bad light. You cannot be here ordinarily. If you are overwhelmed by your situation, you cannot come here. Because you are not yet overwhelmed. You have the situation, but it's not yet what? You cannot come here ordinarily. So, as it should be by divine way, God is aware of your coming here. We believe you have been inspired by the clip you have just watched. Click here to subscribe to witness more of God's power at work in our generation today and stay up to date with the latest prophecies, deliverances, sermons and testimonies from the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Emmanuel TV, changing lives, changing nations and changing the world.